Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now in this video we're going to be having a look at this lot. Now this has been sent to me by Fanatec. Now what we're going to be looking at today is the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup steering wheel. So we have here the actual wheel rim, pop that down, and we have the podium button box module. And then we have the uh, podium podium hub, and then we have the podium advanced paddle module, which we've seen before. Now all this kit goes together to make this wheel rim here that you can see on screen. Now we're just going to build that up now. Hopefully it'll be of use to somebody, make their life a little bit more simple. So what we're going to do, we're going to build it up, and then we're going to take it out on track and see what it's like. Right, let's get to it then. So, to build up this wheel, we have four components that come with the kit. We'll go through them now. So we've got the wheel rim itself. We'll, we'll unbox it and we'll have a look, shall we? So this is first time unboxing. So, as always, with Fanatec, it comes nicely packaged. So we do have some screws there for the actual rim. Pop that down. So, I opted for the leather variant of this. That's quite nice. You look at that. Lovely Porsche steering wheel there. Give you a closer look. So, all the holes are nicely countersunk there. So, this is a full size GT3 endurance replica rim or the wheel itself with the button plate and everything. It's a full scale replica. So, there's the wheel rim. Uh, I'll put that to one side for now. And then we have the actual button box itself. Or what do they call it? The button module, they call it. So this sits in the middle of the wheel rim. I'll just pop this down there just so I don't lose it. Uh, so we'll unbox this. So what do we get inside? So we get some... Probably much needed instructions. Again, everything is be beautifully packaged with Fanatec. And we have the button plate itself. Now, there doesn't seem a lot to this. Uh, so there's the button plate itself. Lovely screen on there. So we have some rotary encoders, switches, funky switches, plenty of buttons. Lots and lots and lots. And there's the back. So it has a little USB-C connector on the back. I presume that goes into the podium hub that we're going to have a look at in a moment. So essentially, let's grab this. That will sit on there like so. So that's what we're going to end up with is the button plate. Sorry, you can't really see it there. The button plate and rim. So there's those two parts. What else do we get in this box? Um, so we have packaging. So in here we have some more screws and uh, like an RJ connector there from USB-C to like an RJ connector. So God knows what that's for, but we'll have to read the instructions and have a look at that. So I'll just pop that in there just for now. We'll see what else comes with the kit. So we also have the Fanatec Podium Hub. Uh, so the quick guide there. Blimey, that's, that's substantial. So that's the Podium Hub. So it's got the Fanatec quick release on the back side there. And then the hub. So there's the small... USB-C connector there that the actual button box plugs into. Excellent. That's just a standard bolt pattern. That's so essentially you could put any wheel on there. Uh, what else do we get in here? Uh, oh, a little Allen key. Handy, handy. Uh, we'll pop that to one side for now. And then we'll get the last piece, which... 
if you watch my one of my recent videos you'll be familiar with so this is the advanced paddle module that we fitted well, it's not the, the actual one but it's the same as the one that we fitted to the formula room so we have the paddles there and these are cut out plus minus or up and down obviously so they're the, they're the ones that we're going to use this time the larger paddles for the gt and then we have the actual paddle modules themselves which we looked at in the video we did last week or so so they're straightforward enough to fit or at least they were on the formula rim so let's try and put all this lot together so i've had a look at how it all goes together and got my head around it and it's dead straightforward for these three pieces at least so the allen bolts that are included the uh the ones with the button plate they go through the wheel rim and then they go into the button plate itself and then once that's in there you can see it's long enough it sticks out of the back can you see that there and then the universal hub will then sorry i need another hand will then go straight on to the back like so so that will sit on the back there then we attach our advanced paddle module to this but there's a, a cap in the center of the hub that we need to take off because that's where we need to plug in our advanced paddle module so we're going to do that first attach the advanced paddle module to the hub so we've got all the components out the box of the advanced paddle module i've opened my bag of screws so essentially they bolt on the side here with these uh, holes there these pre-threaded holes um and the wires will go in this top plate here so what we need to do first we'll take this cover off which is just three allen screws bear with me folks it looks straightforward enough though it looks quite easy and as always if i can do it anybody can do it right we'll take that cover off there we'll get that screw before we lose it pop that back in there inside uh, we have what the paddle module is going to connect to so on the bottom these two here they're for the normal paddles and these larger ones are for the advanced paddle module so i'm going to use logic and say the one on this side is for this paddle and the one on that side is for that paddle so it looks quite easy uh, the only thing i'm concerned about is all this wire we're gonna to have to hide it somewhere in here and there's all kinds of circuitry going on in there that i don't really want to mess with so before we install let's figure out which is the bottom on this module here so it's going to be the where the usb c plug is that's going to be the bottom of the rim so on the bottom there so i'm gonna have that facing me just so i have it clear in my head which one's which and then we need to figure out which paddles go where so the nice look inside of the paddle module faces towards the back of the rim the back of the wheel hub there so that one isn't right because the clutch is on the top so it must be this one so we've got the bottom there so that one will fit on there like so with the clutch on the bottom so let's fit that on there so we'll get a couple of bolts and we'll preload these into these holes here uh, we'll just double check that we've got the bottom there on that side that's correct so then we'll i'll try and do it so you can see it but you've got to watch because there's magnets and it's difficult so we'll try and get these in first time that's that one starting to go in and that one's going in there so we'll just tighten these bad boys up they don't have to be mega tight these bolts but tight enough so they won't fall off 
So there we go. So that will go that way there. So the wheel rim is going to sit on here and then we have the clutch and the shifters on that side. Excellent. So now we just need to do the same with the other one. So we'll find the two bolts and we'll preload these in. It just makes things a little bit easier because there are clearance issues with the wires in there. So this is going to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, goes that way. So again, I'll try and do it so you can see, but it's not going to be easy. So I may well have to lift up. Yeah, we can't see that there. So we're going to have to just rest it on and hope for the best, really. Oh, no, that's no good. Bear with us. So that one will sit on there like so. This isn't easy. Once you get it started, it's not so bad. That's one going in. And there's the other going in. Right, now we're farming. Right, so now we'll just tighten these up. Again, they don't have to be mega tight. We don't want them loose either, obviously. So there we go. So we have the paddle modules installed. So there's the bottom of the hub on that side and they're facing the correct way. So then we've got the issue of the cables. These are gonna have, have to fit inside here. Now, the cables themselves, they have two sides to them there. So they have, I'll try and show you it there. They have one with some electrical connectors on. Hopefully that focuses there. And then the other side doesn't have any. So they can only go in one way. And looking at this, the side with the shiny electrical connectors faces the paddle module. So we'll pop that in like so. That easy. Nice, and the same with the other side. I mean, I haven't read the instructions regarding the wiring, but I'm presuming each connector on each side of the hub is for the relevant paddle module. Now we need to hide these in here somewhere, so this isn't going to be easy. This is not going to be easy, getting all these wires in here without nipping anything. There are some slots in the actual cover though, which is good. So the wires can go in there. So that's the bottom. So we want this facing up. Try and get these in line. Now it doesn't feel right pushing down there. So there's obviously some issues behind or something going on. There we go, that feels good to me. So the wires are in. So we'll just tighten this back up. Keeping hold of it with the thumb so it doesn't pop up because there's a little bit of pressure behind there now with the wires kinked and pushing against the top of the, the, the cover. So tighten these up a little bit at a time evenly because it may well not sit down as far as it did earlier on so just do them a little bit at a time happy days i think we're sorted there guys there we go a little bit of play there actually maybe tighten this one a bit more don't want an annoying rattle when you're driving there we go that's tight so there we go that's all done advanced paddle module fitted to the hub so what we need to do now is attach the paddles to the hub or the advanced paddle module and the ones we're going to be using are uh, the ones on the edges 
So we'll take those out, then we can get rid of the other one. So we don't need that for now. We'll just drop a spacer. Right, so. What do we have here then? So we have two shifters. Uh, as you can see, one's got a plus on and one's got a minus. Obviously, this one goes up gears, that one goes down. And then we have two smaller paddles or carbon fiber tips for the top. So which is going to go where? So this is going to be my upshifting, is it? Sorry, wrong way around, this way. So this is the where, this is where I want that one there. Is that, is that right? Yes, it is. So that's going to sit on there, is it? I'm trying to figure it out now which way it goes. Yes, it must go that way there. So they they are countersunk them. You can see they're countersunk. Can't really see that's not really focusing very well. There we go. So they're countersunk. So they only go one way. So the screw needs to go into this first, then obviously into the shifter. We're just going to be using these small screws, which I'm guessing that fits. Yes, it does. So we'll preload one of these in. And the magnet's just stolen it there. You've got to be careful with the magnet. Get a bit of pressure on the screw before we put it in there. That's that one going in there now, I think. Yes, it is. And then we'll get the other screw before we tighten it down. Pop that in there as well. Excellent, that's started. So we'll just tighten those up. And again, because the counter sunk, they will, they will locate everything when you, when you tighten. It will move the paddle a little bit. Job is a good one. So we have a nice shifter on there now. And then this one will sit uh, on that side. So then we have a paddle inside. That's a bit strange though, that's set up. But that's the way it goes. So we'll pop that on there as well. Same method. So we'll put one in first of all, get that going. There we go. And then the same with the other one. I don't know what I'm going to use this other paddle for though. Uh, I haven't found a use for it yet on the formula rim, so I don't think I'll find one on here but it's handy to have a guess maybe a pass left pass right type thing but you don't want to be hitting that by accident when somebody's close behind when you're racing though but it does look nice looks really good so there we go so that is the paddles attached to that side so we've got the the big paddle there and the smaller paddle behind it, which isn't easy to to grab with your fingers, but it's there anyway, I suppose. But there's not much clearance, as you can see, with the clutch, just clears the bottom paddle there, and then there's not much clearance. So we'll do the same with the other side. We'll come back when that's on. So there we go, all done and dusted. Both sets of shifters on there all work perfectly. All we need to do now is get the button plate on and the rim. So we're gonna attach all these things together now, which I said earlier on should be relatively straightforward. Uh, so we just need to get one bolt in first of all. So we'll start with the top one. We'll need to line that up with the button plate itself. So we'll get that in there. And then once that's in there, we can turn it over and somehow offer that up. Make sure we've got the top and bottom lined up correctly. 
Now this isn't going to be easy folks, so bear with me. Not easy for me anyway. So I just need to jiggle this round and make sure it lines up with the hub itself. Now it can only go in one way, but it's just a case of getting everything lined up as it should be. There we go. Once you've got the first one in, then things will be a little bit easier. So we've got that one in there now. And then it, you can see the holes there now. Once one's in, you can start lining things up properly. It's just getting that first one in that's the difficult part. And once you've got one in, then we can pop a couple more in and start these off. Don't tighten them completely because you do want a little bit of movement. But looking at it, it feels a big old wheel, this, you know. It feels, um, <laughs> it looks big. I mean, it is a full size replica. And I guess with sim racing, things are always scaled down or they tend to be scaled down just a tad. So you may be not used to things being full scale. But this looks good. I'm liking it. But it feels like a proper wheel though, you know, it feels substantial. So we'll do a comparison with this and the uh, the GT1 Lite by Cube Controls. We'll have a little look side by side. And they're probably a similar price, to be honest. Around about 600 euros, 650 euros. I think this retails for 650, I think. 650 euros but on the face of it looking at it you get a lot of wheel rim for 650 euros so we'll just we may need to at some point put some thread lock on these but i don't know if it's going to vibrate loose but we'll just play that by ear so i may well put some thread lock on these bolts maybe have a look online see if anybody's done the same but there we go, so that's the completed wheel rim with advanced paddle module and my word, that feels beefy. That feels, <laughs> that feels really good. So the only thing that's left to do now is connect this USB-C plug into the bottom of the hub, like so. Nice and tidy wireless rim so i'll show you the cube controls one now i'll just grab that from here so there's the cube controls gt1 light so size wise mm, probably around about the same size to be honest uh similar style however the the porsche one's obviously got quite a few more buttons the cube controls one has uh, a couple of rotary encoders on the side there where the Fanatec only has these two. So there's four on the cube rim. But there's a lot more buttons and obviously the Fanatec has the LEDs and the display. So that's comparison size wise. So they are, it is the same size as the Momotech rim on the cube controls GT Lite. So there we go. All that's left to do now is get it on the rig and give it a test. Okay, so here we are in pit lane at Monza in the Porsche 911 Cup car. Now you're probably sick of this combination, but this is the last combo that I drove and I was using the formula rim, so it's familiar. I'll be able to directly compare the rim to the formula one. So it feels 
much bigger when it's actually in front of me here now. Uh, it's 32 centimetres, uh, so it's a full-scale replica of the Porsche 911 GT3 endurance wheel. Uh, it's got the nice OLED display on there, uh, which by default shows your speed and gear selection, and then it's got lights I presume these three here on either side, therefore warning lights, flags and such like. And then we've got our rev lights on the top. So I've mapped some buttons, enough buttons to get us going. So let's get out on track and see how it feels. Now the paddles, yeah, they're just about right. I wouldn't want them any further away from my hands. Uh, the, the ones behind are quite hard to get to, uh, but the clutch... The clutch is where I had it set on the formula rim. So that's just stored that information there. Right, let's get out on track. So as I mentioned, it is a 32 centimeter rim. So it is much bigger and it's not light. It's not a lightweight rim. This weighs in at just under 2.2 kilos. So it is quite heavy. Uh, it has got a leather um, wheel rim. I opted for the leather one. I didn't want to be messing about with Alcantara. The actual wheel rim is aluminium. So they couldn't really get the wheel rim any lighter. Uh, there is, yeah, I'm getting feedback through there. There's quite a bit of detail. I haven't lost any with it being a, a bigger wheel rim. Now you can customize this display. It's got ITM on there. Um, I'm trying to think of what that stands for. Um, intelligent telemetry, telemetry mode so it takes information from the sim and you can display that on there such as track position lap times relative and all that kind of stuff so i'll have a look at that at a later date uh, so how many buttons have we got here so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten buttons uh, but these two are generally buttons they are so we've got the joystick on the left and the hat switch, the funky switch on the right hand side. Uh, those two you can press down and use those as a button. So essentially we've got 12 buttons. Uh, we've got two toggle switches here. Um, and then we've got two rotary encoders at the bottom. So I don't think I would need any more buttons really. I've got a button box down to my right. But everything that I would probably need is on this rim here. I don't think I would need any more, especially with the... The two paddles, the two smaller paddles at the top, I could probably use those as buttons, to be honest, um, for something. I don't know what. So I think these button caps come off, uh, but I don't really see the need in, in changing those. Uh, it does come with some stickers, but I haven't put those on yet. Right, let's see what it feels like for a lap around Monza. Yeah, there's plenty of, plenty of feedback. God, it feels huge. You can see the rev lights there going up. And the speed. Yeah, it flashes when you need to change. I like that. That's a super wide line round Parabolica there. Right. Yeah, you can feel all the detail through the rim. You can see the rim moving there. I'm just holding that gently. Yeah, there's loads of detail. Even though it's heavier, it hasn't really lost any of the detail. Be interesting to see just what it's like in a race because this is one thing testing it here but in a race then you when you're pushing I'm not really pushing now obviously but I like it I like it So I, can, I showed you it next to the cube controls rim and it actually feels bigger 
than the cube rim when I'm using it, from what I remember. I don't know if that's because the the inside of the rim is a little bit busier than the cube rim. The cube rim's a little bit sparse. But obviously this is wireless as well, which I like, which is one of the reasons why I'm using the Fanatec instead of the VRS Direct Force Pro that I've got. But I like it. Feels good. I do like the leather. I'm pleased I went for that option rather than the Alcantara. Uh, which was my pit limiter, that one. There we go. Right, so there we got. Right, so that's all the information. Let me know the pit limit is on. What? Right, so I, th I presume the red is a flag. I presume, and when we put the pit limiter on, it flashes. Right. So we need to configure this uh, intelligent telemetry mo telemetry mode thingy, whatever that is. But we'll have a look at that on another video. But feels good. So there we go. That's the Fanatec podium. 911 GT3 endurance wheel built up. Now, I don't know what you think, but I think that this wheel rim looks, looks absolutely stunning. Um, I can't think of anything that I would want from a wheel that this hasn't got. It's got a display, more buttons that you can shake a stick at. It's obviously got the fancy advanced paddle module on the back uh, with the dual clutch. Absolutely perfect. Feels nice and weighty. Now, that might not suit everybody, but if I'm going to buy something, I want it to feel substantial. Now, I know I didn't buy this. Fanatec sent me this. Thank you very much, Fanatec. But uh, this doesn't feel like a cheap toy. Uh, so what do I think of it? Um, perfect. This will be my wheel rim of choice moving forward. Unless I'm driving a car that uses a formula type rim, I'll use the formula rim. Uh, but this will probably be my go-to wheel rim for most cars when I'm sim racing. So, good job, Fanatec. I really like it. Uh, price, I think it's about €650, Euros, €670. Euros. If you buy the components separately, I think it's €720. Euros. Uh, I compared this to the GT1 uh, Lite from Cube Controls. That's similarly priced. Um... That's Alcantara. That has a couple more rotary encoders than this one, but it doesn't have a display, and this one's wireless. So both of those rims are good. I prefer this one because it looks better for me, and it fits on my DD1, which I like the look of more as well. So hopefully I won't get called a sellout in this video. I'm just kind of showing you and letting you know what I think. Um, but anyway, hopefully this video will help somebody when they're building theirs up. It is straightforward. If I can do it, anybody can do it, but there's nothing, nothing at all to it. So there we go. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Cheers.